Well, hey, welcome. My name is Russell Della Pena, and this is my lovely wife, Diana, and our little guy, Ivan, uh, and our other little guy with the, all the fur. That's Balu, and uh, we're the owners of PushButtonInvestor.com, and I'm excited that you're able to watch this video here uh, because I want to share something with you that was shared with me, something I learned from another guy named Russell, uh, who's uh, turned his business into a $100 million dollar uh, business um, when it comes to a software that builds landing pages called ClickFunnels, it's a company that I use today. We kind of moved all of our stuff uh, that we previously used with other companies over to ClickFunnels because I just love not only the software but also the training and what it's done for our business. Uh, last year, we actually tripled our income by using. Uh, the, the strategies that he shared uh, with me and others uh, and what I want to share with you today. And so this is a, um, a strategy that's dear to my heart because I think that most real estate investors or real estate prof uh, professionals like realtors run into this trap. There's a trap that they run into on a regular basis that makes it difficult for their business to grow and so that's kind of what I want to share with you today um, on you know essentially how to um, profit from your real estate deals when your buyers don't buy your properties but it's more than that so this is just kind of the 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 main thing that I want to talk about but um, there's so much more that you're you're gonna learn here so in, in other words this strategy will apply in so many other areas so how to profit from your real estate deals when your when your buyers don't buy your properties? Uh, I remember a uh, mentor student of mine had a deal. It was a forty-eight thousand dollar deal. I believe it was in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania. It started with a P, and the property was like forty-eight thousand dollars. So it was a lower end property, which means it attracted a lot more people. And this property literally got over four hundred buyers inquiring, four hundred leads. Uh, a lot of times folks want to know, you know, should I buy, build my buyer's list? Should I build my seller's list? Uh, you want to build both. And when you build your buyer's list uh, with lower end properties, you'd be shocked at how easy it was. By the way, he didn't spend a dime in advertisement in order to get that many buyers. Not one red cent. And that's simply because if you've got a great deal, the money finds you. You know, if the if the property is priced right, the money will find you. If properties don't sell it's because it's not priced right. It's just that simple. And so he obviously can only put one buyer into the property. So what do you do with all the other 399 buyers, right? Or however many it was. It was around 400, 000, uh, 400 buyers. What do you do with those folks? And so most investors or realtors that are in a situation like this, um, they're not sure what to do next. Uh, what do I do with all these buyers? Well, the obvious is you can turn around and sell those buyers that are left over another property. The challenge, of course, is finding a very like property that you can turn around and sell to them quick enough to where they haven't you know, rented a property or uh, bought somewhere else. And so the concept I wanna share with you is how to make money when they don't buy a specific property the obvious, again, is to try to sell them another property. That's That should be obvious. If it's not, that's what you want to do. You want to sell them another property. But if you can't do that, there's a way that you can still profit from those buyers while providing them goodwill and, and tons of value. And that value can easily be explained in what's called the value ladder. This is actually what I learned from Russell Brunson, uh, the, uh, one of the uh, partners of ClickFunnels. And uh, he learned it from other folks, and it's uh, <laughs> excuse me, it's an age-old added, uh, age-old um, way to build a business properly that I think a lot of real estate investors, professionals, realtors miss. Usually, if you look at right here, this you've got on the left-hand side, you've got an arrow going up, and it's talking about the value. Down at the bottom of this line of this arrow, you have really no value, and as you go up, you're giving more and more value. Uh, the bottom line here, the bottom arrow, is going to the right, and it's about price. So usually where these two intersect, down at the bottom, value and price, there's very little or no value, 
and the price is therefore free, right? And as you move along to the right, you're giving more value, so your price is going up. So if we were to go up this ladder, um, I'm giving more and more value as I go up. And at the very end of this ladder, I have this big dollar sign, and that's where I'm giving the most value to my customers, and I'm also charging the most. And usually what real estate professionals do is they've got one product, it's a house, right? And so they're right about either, you know, maybe they're at the top here because the house can be expensive or maybe they're, maybe they're somewhere here in the middle, depending on kind of what um, price range they're, they're working with. But usually, you know, it's probably gonna be at the, the, the top area here. But let's just say, let's say it's in the middle. Let's say it's right in the middle rung of the value ladder. I think it's gonna help you to understand this concept a little bit better because this concept works for any business, not just real estate, but it works for any kind of business that you've got. Most businesses have a flagship product, one thing, one off. They sell one thing, maybe two, and that's it. That's how they monetize their products and services. That's how they make money. And then they've got to go around and sell that product and service again. So on this value ladder, what's What's awesome about it is it, it it gives you a business plan. So instead of instead of writing out one of those big monster business plans and never getting your business off the ground, you can actually build a value ladder and see um, the 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 progression of value that you're giving your customer. How does this relate to real estate, though? Well, it, let's say we're at the middle rung of the ladder and we're selling a house right there. That means that below this middle rung, the second and first rung, there's room for other products and services to be sold. It also means that above the middle rung, there's other products and services that can be sold on top of that. And so what it's telling me is that there are more ways than just one that I can monetize my customers, but also provide value, right? At the end of the day, I don't mind charging my customers something as long as I know that what I'm charging them is 10 times less than the value they're getting. So for every dollar they spend, they should get $10 in value. And so your customers want uh, you to provide them with value. Uh, if they bought from you once, they're willing to buy from you twice and three times and so on. So the big mistake that real estate professionals like realtors and real estate investors make is number one they have one product a house number two they don't have anything to sell to the remaining buyers that they might get and so they find themselves with a bunch of buyers and they have no other product uh, properties to sell number three they're missing out because they could be selling other things besides real estate ancillary products uh, products that um, may not be directly related, but they could be indirectly related. They, you know, credit repair if they've got credit problems, for example. We in the rent-to-own space and the creative seller financing space, by nature, have buyers with bad credit. So selling them credit repair on the lower end of the rung here, um, or even on the on, on the higher end, depending on what the price point would be, is another piece of value that I could. Uh, provide that customer and also earn income. The real bigger strategy of knowing what your value, value ladder is, is that at the end of the day, you want to get to a point where you're not just posting aimlessly on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and you're hoping that you can get some leads or maybe you're doing mailers or maybe you're doing um, banded signs or networking events, whatever it might be. You want to get to a point where you can do paid advertisement because paid advertisement is advertisement that you can um, control. It's traffic that you can control and ultimately own if you capture contact information. And it's also predictable. It's consistent and predictable. And so um, a mentor of mine once told me, he said, Russ, you've got to find a consistent, predictable pond to go fishing in for your customers every day. Otherwise, you're gonna go out of business. And wouldn't you like to have a business that you could consistently and predictably um, send traffic to that business? Maybe that business is online or maybe you capture leads online for your offline business. However you, you would do it, doesn't really matter. Uh, the concepts are the same. And wouldn't it be awesome to have a consistent, predictable way to on-demand 
get customers for your business. It would even be better if you could have multiple ways to monetize those customers, but also provide multiple ways of giving them value. And so one of the ways that I do that is here in the middle rung, I've got a real a, a piece of property. Well, let's take, for example, um, the, um, the rent to own buyer, right? So they want to buy the house in the middle of the rung. Well, um, again, I may be able to sell one buyer that property, but what do I do with all the other buyers? Well, if they need credit repair, I can go down the rung here and I can sell them credit repair. Um, if I'm going across and to the right, maybe I want some kind of a credit repair service that charges a monthly fee. So now I've got continuity in my business. Really, uh, as, as Russell Brunson would say, um, your business isn't a real business until you have continuity, until some, you're charging them something monthly. It's much easier to build a business when your customers are paying you monthly. And so that can be done in real estate too. If you're doing a sandwich lease option where they're paying you an upfront fee of maybe say three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 and then a monthly spread every single month, there you go. There's your continuity. Uh, you just added that in. So that's part of, that can be part of your la uh, value ladder as well. For, for our rent to own buyers, what are the two things that I know about these types of buyers? Well, one, I know they've got bad credit. If they had great credit, they wouldn't need me, right? They wouldn't need to buy rent to own. So they've got credit challenges. Are there exceptions? Sure. But on the whole, most of them are gonna have some kind of a credit challenge. And that's what's gonna stop them. Maybe it's a low score, maybe it's a, a recent bankruptcy, something, you know, tax liens, whatever. And so credit repair obviously is one uh, uh, option. For me, what I do is I actually use a service called Legal Shield. Let me see if I can pop out of the presentation here. And I actually started and became a member of Legal Shield in 2004, 2005. A year later, I actually became an associate and I started marketing their services. And I did it for about five years. And one of the challenges I think I had at that time is I just really wasn't sure um, how to build and continue to build the business, but I did pretty well. I went on three different trips. Uh, Ensenada, a cruise to Ensenada for a weekend, all paid by the company, seven day trip to um, uh, Lake Tahoe, all paid expenses, flights, hotels, food, etc. And then a corporate trip as well, same thing, everything paid for. Uh, added an ex additional, I had months that I was adding three to six to nine thousand dollar plus months on top of my, my business um, because of this business and also had a tremendous amount of leverage income. I remember being in Lake Tahoe and the, you know, within my little organization, we had 111 sales and, uh, I only had did 11 of those sales personally and my team did a hundred while I was on vacation. And so it was awesome. I, I felt like, wow, I've got leveraged income here too. And so this service is a service that allows people who want to get affordable access to legal services in all areas of law. So not just real estate, but it could be business, it could be tax, it could be divorce, it could be credit repair, uh, which is actually what I was doing at that time. I was coupling it with a credit repair company that I owned at that time. And so uh, how empowered were my clients when they were able to have an, a law firm send a collection agency a debt validation letter or a cease and desist letter? You know, they felt empowered. But not only did I provide them a service that was empowering, I also provided them a way to earn income. And so if I go back to my value ladder, what I was doing in that particular business and that what I'm doing now today in my real estate business is I was not just trying to sell a one-off type product. I was not just trying to have a one-time flagship product that I was selling here in the middle rung. I was actually adding um, uh, additional streams of income and also leveraged income, income that I earned from the efforts of those clients. So if you look at it from the credit repair end of it, I was making a sale from uh, helping them debt, you know, do debt settlement and repair their credit. If you look at it as I went up the ladder, I was then inviting them to become a member of the service and use that as part of their credit repair. And of course, for things thereafter, after their credit was repaired, still keep it and still use it. And then I invited them even higher up the ladder to um, become associates under me in my team. 
And so if you've ever had an experience with multi-level marketing, network marketing, you might be cringing right now going, oh my goodness, Russ is trying to get me into another, you know, get me to a pyramid scam or, or scheme or whatever. Um, I would just invite you to reconsider. Uh, Legal, Legal Shield has been around for as long as I've been alive, actually a little bit longer, um, 1972. I was born in 1974. And, um, you know, it's a legal company that, that has been vetted um, by uh, attorney generals, um, board of, uh, you know, all the, all the um, what is it, the board of attorneys or, good grief, my mind just escaped me. I know you're thinking of the answer, but I can't, my mind's going blank. These guys have been vetted like crazy. I mean, the Better Business Bureau gives them an A rating, Yelp, and on and on and on. Yeah, like any company, there are people that misrepresent the company, but uh, and give it, you know, that it might give it a bad name online or something. But the real serious companies that have vetted it um, know what's going on with this business, and it's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And from speaking from somebody who spent five years in it and who relaunched his business recently. I can attest to that. And so how does this relate to real estate? Well, a couple of ways. One, my rent-to-own buyer has credit problems and they have credit problems because they've got financial problems. So if they've got financial problems and credit problems, they're probably going to need the service as a member in order to have documents reviewed, which the service does for for pennies on the dollar. I mean, I think uh, 20 to 30 bucks. No, actually, uh, what is it? Uh, 20 to 40 bucks a month, you can get not only all access to the personal services, but you can also get identity theft protection, which is uh, the number one white collar crime in America right now. And so these guys need it. They need help. They need attorneys to go through their different credit challenges. And each credit challenge usually requires a different attorney. Most people can't afford an attorney at 250 to $500 an hour in the first place, much less get one attorney and then have to go get another attorney who handles it, who's a specialist in another area of law. And this service that I've been a member since 2004, I can make a phone call and um, have an attorney uh, advise me in any area of law that I need help in. Uh, as a matter of fact, this month, uh, I, I'm finding that because I've, I've got a couple of LLCs, I have an LLC and an LLP, um, there's some new laws that are coming out that I've got to have squared away by December 31st. And so I would use the attorney for that. I will use the attorney for that. And it's not going to cost me 250 to $500 an hour. And so if I'm a rent to own buyer, I need it, the service for my own personal situ situation. But I got into that situation most likely because I have financial problems and I could use some extra income part time, maybe an extra 300 to 500 bucks an hour or more. There are people that make 100,000. There are people who make a million dollars a year and more. And so within the company, and, and so I can help this rent to own buyer in those two ways. So that's powerful. I can, I can help them get, solve their problems currently, which are stopping them from being able to qualify for a, a, a home. And then I can help them in the future make additional income, plus they can start to make leveraged income instead of just the earned income that they make at their job. They can build, you know, they can work full time on their job, but part time on their fortune by spending a few hours a night sharing this service with other people. And then it also builds them a residual income. You know, does your business currently build you a residual income? Most don't. I have a friend who hasn't been in the business of Legal Shield for seven years and still gets a residual check. He did very, very little at that time. But the little he did still pays him a residual check seven day, seven years later. And there's a lot of businesses uh, or, or network marketing businesses that say that they can do that, but they don't. And he actually does. I mean, it just it's just huge. It, 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 it builds your belief when you see that. And so what I want to share with you is how you can use the value ladder in your business so you're not just focusing solely on one flagship offering, i.e. selling a house. A mentor of mine years ago once said, Russ, you know, you're struggling with cash flow right now, right? I said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hunting the big deals here, but, you know, they, they take long and they're hard to get. And so he said, he said, you know, that's because you have a cash flow problem. He goes, let me ask you a question, Russ. I said, sure. He says, Russ, how many elephants have you seen in the wild? I said, how many elephants have I seen in the wild? He said, yeah, how many elephants have you seen in the wild? I said, none. 
He says, how many rabbits have you seen in the wild? I said, a lot of rabbits. He goes, Russ, go hunt rabbits. And what he was saying was, build in systems into your business that provide you monthly cash flow. Eat while you're hunting the elusive elephant. Don't stop hunting the elephant. Sell the big deals. That's what we're going to do here in Push Button Investor with our big deals. But what helps to cover costs and operation costs along the way and produce cash flow is having more products and services up and down this value ladder that help compensate while you're going for the big elephant. And so it doesn't have to be legal shield. It could be it could be um, sandwich lease options. It can be other uh, products and services that you provide. I just choose legal shield because um, it's a non me too business, meaning I'm not competing with other legal services that have essentially dominated the entire market. I don't compete with anybody else. They're the only ones who do that uh, to the extent that they are able to do it. it. And it's all across the U.S. and Canada that they're doing it in. Uh, in other words, nobody's as far as them. And by the way, Europe, 80% of Europeans have a legal plan like this. We follow Europe. So guess what? We haven't hit more than 2 or 3% penetration. But as soon as this business hits critical mass... It explodes. And so you want to make sure that you're positioned for that. And so that's what I fell in love with Legal Shield for and why I got back into it. Obviously, a little bit more wiser, a little bit more gray hair, a little bit more experience and knowing how to build the business without chasing friends and family. That's another reason why people don't get into multi-level marketing. It's like, oh, I tried that. I chased my friends and family and maybe a few of them signed up. But once they signed up, then what did you do, right? Who, you know, How many more parents could you sign up after that point? None, right? And so you're stuck. And so knowing how to get a consistent, predictable pond efficient, like my other mentor said, was critical. And so that's what I teach inside a push button investor. And so what I want to do is invite you to take a look at the business. I don't want to hard sell you into it. What I want to do is simply invite you to look at uh, the Legal Shield business and consider it as part of your value ladder. I think what you'll notice is that as a real estate professional, whether you're an investor or a realtor, you're constantly seeing on your contracts that you're supposed to have a, an attorney review your contracts before you sign it, but you don't do that, right? Nobody does because $250 an hour to $500 an hour is expensive. But see, I can do that because I have that service. Now, I could afford the $250 to $500 if I needed to, but why would I if I don't have to? And I can get an AV rated attorney. So if you're thinking, oh, yeah, but these are attorneys that, you know, they just passed the bar exam or whatever. Uh, no, these are AV rated. AV rated means that you're in the top 10 to 15 percentile of all attorneys across the U.S. and Canada. And so you're you're something special. You're not just somebody who just passed a bar exam yesterday. And so I have access to that in all areas of law. They'll review my contracts. They'll draft letters on my behalf and send them on my behalf with their letterhead with all kinds of attorneys' names all over it. It's pretty intimidating when your attorney sends a letter to your tenant to collect uh, on rent versus you doing it, right? Not to mention the fact that you can get in trouble by doing it the wrong way, right? There's collection laws that you've got to abide by. Do you know what they are? If you're doing real estate investing like I do, you do it virtual, you're doing it across in different states. Different states have different laws. Did you know that North Carolina and Texas have different laws when it comes to creative seller financing than do other states? If you don't know what those nuances are you can get yourself into trouble when you're drafting contracts so why not have an attorney review those contracts for you so again i can do that for less than 40 bucks a month including having identity theft to protect my wealth i mean you are in this business to build wealth right if you get your identity stolen um you've lost that wealth and no this is not just credit monitoring anybody can monitor credit Cre credit monitoring is simply <laughs> telling you that you're in trouble Hey, <laughs> I monitored your credit and now you're in trouble, right? I mean, that doesn't help. So um, anyway, what I want to do is I want to share with you more information. And so um, there's two ways that we can do that. One is somewhere on this page, you're probably going to see a button that you can schedule a call with me. Uh, there may be an application or something uh, to work with me. Uh, there also may be a way, a button that will lead you to another video that will give you more in-depth information about this. But if you're real real estate investor, realtor, real estate professional, somebody who takes this business serious, you're going to be in need of, a, of law firms and attorneys on a regular basis to give you counsel. It doesn't mean that you're going to be in trouble all the time. It means that you want to be preventative. It means you want to avoid trouble by getting good counsel. 
And so sometimes I know I had to get my pride out of the way and be open to talking to an attorney if I had a question. The problem is, again, it's either the pride or it's lack of money. And so I just want to encourage you to take a look at this service as a way to create rabbits in your business that, that feed you while you're building your business. It takes time to learn how to do two major, major, major skill sets, internet marketing, which is what I'm going to be teaching you, and also no money down, real estate investing. And so during that time, if you can earn extra income, if you have ways to make money from buyers that don't buy your house by providing them value in two different ways, one, the service, and the second, earning extra income, that benefits you. You're going to make a lot more money because of it, and I'll show you how. So take a look at the information. It'll be around here somewhere on the page. And uh, thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I look forward to working with you.